Dear Diary, it's been 25 days and I have yet to see a lion in the wild. South Africa, July 15, 2050. My hopes are fading and I'm beginning to feel like we're searching for the Loch Ness Monster. The more mysterious this creature is, the more I want to learn about it. I have begun to research and understand many things about the lion in my time here, and I'm still confused as to why humanity allowed them to disappear. I know that people would travel from all ends of the world to see them. They were respected by all species, and for a short period, even us. Lions played a great role in the stability of Africa's wildlife. They were apex predators whose existence contributed to maintaining our ecosystems. I was told they controlled our herbivore populations by preying on the weakest members, which were normally the sick. These weak animals would typically host parasites or other harmful illnesses. Lions used to be able to control diseases that would otherwise ravage overgrown herds. But without them, diseased herds are today's reality. Governments, organizations, and people of old ages knew all this. They knew that the lion was a central part of our ecosystem. And yet, it seemed like their generation, and now ours, sealed the fate for the lions. And we have no one else to blame but ourselves. South Africa, July 16, 2050. Today was another day I did not see a lion and another day I learned something heartbreaking. We didn't just let the lions disappear, we helped kill them off. For many years, hunters and poachers would seek lions and other big cats for no other reason than to stroke their own ego. Hunts took place so that a common man could conveniently experience the thrill of taking down one of Earth's most revered beasts with minimum effort. This was occurring in tandem with the depletion of other endangered species regardless of warning signs that indicated certain extinction. Despite all this, self-status and pride ruled everything. Canned hunting, a phenomenon which swept Africa and took her big cats, has been a key player in the lion's disappearance. From the moment these lions were born, their fates were sealed. Humans would breed lions in captivity and separate mothers from their cubs to jumpstart ovulation. The cubs were then placed in centers to have people interact with them when they were young and walk beside them during their adolescence. These practices were called cub petting and lion walking and both had huge revenues for the breeders. Of course, these experiences were once in a lifetime opportunities for man, but for the lion, it was something different. It was something much more sinister. They were often drugged and lethargic as not to risk hurting the paying customers and lived their days barely aware of their surroundings. Sometimes they were even maimed, having their claws and fangs removed, all to protect the humans around them. When their size became a liability for the farms that owned them, their lives reached an anticlimax and started to decline in a humiliating manner. They were sent to hunting farms nearby, where their growth was monitored until they reached a size that deemed them attractive for a trophy. Then they were released in a small, fenced-off area and hunted. This was called being bred for the bullet. This type of hunting, which in 2015 cost around $20,000 for a captive male, was cheaper than killing a lion in the wild, and thus created an economy that required death to prosper. We killed lions all the time without thinking about how precious they were. We couldn't see their value to the world and the environment, but we saw how they could increase the value of our own self-status, and in our greed, we took what we shouldn't have. And this isn't even the end of all our wrongdoings to the lions. Not only was hunting lions to the death a sport, but a trend of owning them alive in private homes added to their decline. Smuggled away with corrupt assistance, they were collected by the wealthy as a status symbol to prove their wealth, power, and financial prestige. And if we move further to the east, there lay false impressions among many that the bones of lions contain cures for humanity's worst diseases. Never proven by science, the demand for powdered lion bones was almost as strong as the demand for rhino horns. We lived in a world so advanced by science, and yet acted on the word of magic. South Africa, July 17th, 2050. Today is my last day. I never did see any lions. I'm sad, but more than anything, I'm angry. Angry that we didn't do more to help the lions, that we were the biggest threat of them all, and now because of our greed and ignorance, we have no lions left to show for it. 
the most modest of predictions say ecosystems will collapse within a couple of decades. Thanks to our greed, we are doomed to extinction. Humans have now become the most endangered species on Earth. There was a cost every time we petted, photographed, walked with, or hunted the lion. That cost was a life. And now, thousands and thousands of lives later, we have finally reached a dead end. The lions are gone, and it's all our fault. Tell me, if you knew what I know now, what would you have done?